next, my favorite question in the paper, we've got similar we'll to show detailed reasoning. We've got simultaneous equations, but we're not actually trying to solve them. We're just trying to find the different values of M for which there will be real solutions. Now, the second equation, in fact, is a circle. And so if we had our straight line over here, we wouldn't get real solutions. Whereas if we had it here, for example, then we'd get these two solutions. And actually this starts off the process of simultaneous equations because where there are solutions, the y values are equal. So what we can do is um, basically replace the y's here by mx because they're gonna be the same when the two curves cross. That's your standard process for solving quadratic simultaneous equations when you don't have y equals and y equals. In that case, you set them equal to one another. But here we need to do a substitution. So we've got x squared plus, and now replace y by mx. So it's gonna be mx all squared. Minus six x minus two y, which becomes two mx, put that in a bracket, plus five equals zero. So this is our simultaneous equation. Now you might not be sure what to do with this, and that's where I come in to give an assistance. Which, like, think back to when you're solving quadratics and you're trying to find whether there are solutions or not. Essentially, we've turned this into a quadratic in x. We're interested in whether, you know, how many solutions there are. In fact, when there's, uh, when there's more than zero solutions. And this is where the discriminant comes in. So b squared minus 4ac. We've got, a, we turn it into quadratic, but this still relates to the simultaneous equations. We're interested in where b squared minus 4ac is greater or equal to zero not just greater than zero, it didn't say two distinct solutions, just real solutions. Okay, and remember, b squared minus 4ac comes from our quadratic equation, ax squared plus bx plus c equals zero. So I need to get that in that form before I do anything. Let's carry on then and expand some of this. So x squared plus m squared x squared, then it's gonna be minus six x, minus 2mx plus 5 equals 0. Okay, I didn't do a great deal there, but I did simplify it slightly. Okay, now I'm going to try and get it as ax squared. So I'm going to factorize out the x squared, although I'm going to put it on the right. It's going to be m squared plus 1x squared. Just tidy that little squared up a little bit. They're the same thing. This here and what I just wrote are exactly the same thing. If you expanded it out, you'd see. So, you know, get into the habit of being able to factorize things like this. this. I've basically just got the coefficient now as m squared plus one. That's going to be my a. Next up, um, I'm going to actually keep it as minus and then do a very similar thing. It's going to be six plus two m times x. You could do plus if you prefer. You could do a plus and then a minus six m and a minus two m. But I don't know. It's, you normally like write it like this. Just be careful though, because the whole thing is B. If you expand it out, you will get minus six X and minus two M, so it definitely works. And then plus five equals zero. So that's my C. Okay, here goes then. We're gonna square minus six plus two M. In fact, when you square a negative, it's the same as squaring the equivalent positive. So I'm just gonna write six plus two M squared minus four A M squared plus one and then C, five. I'll just put brackets in there writing, rather than writing time signs, it's okay. Greater or equal to zero. Okay, now expand this double bracket. Remember, it's six plus two M times six plus two M, I'm times it by itself, so I'm gonna get four M squared. I'm gonna get two M times six gives 12, and then I'm gonna get another one of them, so 24 M plus 36. And then I'm gonna minus, I'm just gonna put a little intermediate step here, minus 20 m squared plus one. And this is gonna be greater or equal to zero. Okay, then I'm gonna minus 20 m squared. Minus 20 is greater or equal to zero. Now you could collect the like terms at this point. When I did it, I always look for common factors. Just to, It just makes it easier. I can avoid using my calculator. And actually there's a common factor of four in here. So we can just divide each term individually by four. They're all being added, that's absolutely fine. m squared plus six m 
plus 9 minus 5 square, m squared minus 5 is greater or equal to 0. You don't have to do that if, if you don't want to. And then it just becomes a little bit easier to simplify it without a calculator. You might say in an exam, okay, better just to be super careful, use your calculator. Yeah, I think I agree in that case. So minus 4m squared plus 6m plus 4 is greater or equal to 0. And then I'm going to make it so the coefficient of m squared is positive. So basically just switch all the signs around. But make this less than or equal to 0. Technically I've added 4m squared to both sides, minus 6m and minus 4. Okay. Now there's another common factor, so I can divide through by 2. 2m squared minus 3m minus 2 is less than or equal to 0. And now I'm going to factorise. It factorises. Oh, let me just explain one factorising. I'm basically finding where it's equal to 0. And that will help me draw a little graph of the quadratic. y equals this. And then I can see where it's less than or equal to 0. That's your classic way of dealing with it. So I need a minus 3m, it's got to be minus 2 here, it's going to be minus 4m, and then a plus 1 here. Which gives me, as my roots, minus a half and 2. Now the quadratic I'm about to draw does not relate really to the original simultaneous equations, other than the, you know, the roots like this, is, but it is the... Um, the discriminants essentially, that's what we're plotting and we're interested in where that is. Actually, sorry, it's not a discriminant, it's the negative of the discriminant because I've swapped it around, but it will help us find out um, how many, or where there are two, two, where there are real solutions. So minus a half and two. It's going to come down a bit like this. We're interested in where it is less than or equal to zero. It's going to be this range here. So it's going to be in between these values, including minus a half and two. Therefore, minus a half is less than or equal to m, less than or equal to two. And we're sorted. Oh, quite a lot of effort there. Finally, we're asked to give a geometrical interpretation of the solution in the case where m is equal to 2. It's three marks. We've got to make sure we write enough here. So when m equals 2, okay, now I there's different ways you can do this, but I opted to just look at the discriminant because basically that's what we calculated here. And we found when the negative discriminant was equal to 0, that was when it was 2. So it's also going to be um, when the discriminant is equal to 0. So from, a, from above, I think, just want to quote that. And there'll just be 1. I mean, you wouldn't, would you call it repeated roots? Maybe, but there's one solution to the simultaneous equation here. And if I come back to my, this is probably not required in the question, but it is a circle. And if there's just one solution, the straight line is just going to glance off of it like that. So the straight line will be a tangent. To the other, I'm just going to call it to the other curve. All right, pretty sure that is comprehensive enough.